chip from 43 with Sanchez holding and Luke Rhodes snapping. That field goal is on the way and pretty perfect. Like Blankenship and the Colts don't have a care in the world. Had a 93-yard kick return on Monday Night Football right here against the Chiefs a season ago. Sanchez puts it in the air. Duvernay, a couple yards deep out of the end zone, will bring it out. He'll get as far as the 24. Down to Lisa Salters. And Steve, when the Colts' defense was over here on the sidelines, Darius Leonard called everyone together. He was very emotional trying to fire everyone up. Remember a couple of weeks ago that players-only meeting that was led by the defense after the Colts dropped to 0-3. Leonard told us grown men got called out. Some feelings may have been hurt. It didn't look like any feelings were hurt when he was firing everyone up, but he was definitely trying to light a fire under his defense to go and finish this game. Well, the opportunity is there. Jackson has some time to throw. Andrews, unbelievable one-handed grab. How did he hang on to that one down at the 50? Hit by Xavier Rhodes. Just watch Mark Andrews on this intermediate crosser. Just finds the zone void. Xavier Rhodes puts the big hit on him. Look, Marquise Brown, Mark Andrews, they have feasted on defenses on these deep over routes this year. Whether it be against too high, single high, they have found the zone voids over and over again for big plays. Xavier Rhodes was out in the last series. They attacked and got the touchdown to Marquise Brown, and now he's down on the ground. I'm not sure what was going on with Isaiah Rogers' last drive, but now this is only a two-score game. It's a 16-point game with Superman at quarterback, and you've got serious issues at corner for the Colts. And Lamar is slinging it now, 20 of 24 in the game. He's hit his last seven, and Mark Andrews over 100 yards receiving. Worst possible position for a defensive coordinator to be in right now. And so now Anthony Chesley, the, the practice squad upgrade this week, is back on the field. And what this does is if you're Matt Eberflus, you have to give him help. So you have yeah. to rotate, which brings into play now the running game for the Ravens if they want it. Yeah, this game is going to be decided by the defensive line of the Indianapolis Colts. Isaiah Rodgers is out there for the Colts. Jackson will take his time, survey and find Andrews again, makes the first man miss. Eighth catch for Mark Andrews. Game of 18. Well, I was watching Mark Andrews this weekend in practice, and when he runs routes, he looks like a receiver. Look at his, he's nimble. He makes Sandejo miss him completely. He runs routes like a receiver at 255 pounds, and his yards after the catch is unreal. From the 33, up high to get it, it was Marquise Brown. For six. So if you're Baltimore, you want to stay in this personnel group and you want to keep as many corners on the field for the Colts as you can. They've put the, uh, the rookie Chesley inside at nickel. Some pressure from the Colts. It's Josh Oliver, his first catch tonight. Yeah, you figure they want to protect the youngsters and put them inside where he can give them more help. But on the outside, they put Kenny Moore out right. there. Who's so your they, nickel? Yeah, so but it, if he's a better player and if they want to play any kind of single high, you got to put the better player out there. Lamar, sidearm, slings it to Devontae Freeman. Down to the five. Sandejo dropped him, and it's going to be first and goal after the pickup of 15. They brought Chesley inside, and they blitzed him there because that's the easiest thing for him to do, but Lamar knows that now the weakness was in the middle of the defense. Like, you're a zone short. They sent five. One dropper short. Somebody's going to be open. Lamar has all sorts of time. Now finally throws. No way they can cover that long. It's Mark Andrews, but there is a flag down. They're going to get a hold on the Colts in the end zone. Holding defense number 47. That's going to lose the fly. Good. There's also the play as a touchdown. First touchdown of the season for Mark Andrews. Couldn't have come at a better time for Baltimore. But you're going to see Mark Andrews right here. He's just going to go over here and find a little open area on the inside where 
They're just zoning things off, and no one really looks him up and tries to plaster him, which is something that Matt Eberflus talked about. You have to plaster receivers in the end zone when you're in zone coverage, and they didn't do it. Going for two here, try to cut it to eight. I look for Andrews again in the flat. Jackson, there it is, right on. Mark Andrews, two-point conversion. And the two-score game has become a one-score game. Nine and a half to play in the fourth. And the complexion of this one has changed in a massive way. You got to give credit to Greg Roman and to Lamar Jackson for knowing the weakness of the defense. They lose some corner out here in the fourth quarter. I know you guys saw this coming in the second. When it was 7-3. Ashton Doolittle let it go. And we'll go to Lisa Salters. Steve, just a few moments ago, Xavier Rhodes walked off the field with the unaffiliated neuroconsultant. That's the doctor who wears the red hat. There's one on each sideline. That tells us that he's being evaluated for a possible head injury. No word yet on whether Rhodes will be able to return. This crowd noise is not going to help. Wow. This is the loudest this crowd has been all night in Baltimore. You you see what's left of the cornerbacks for the Colts. Wentz to throw. It's Kylan Gransom before his second catch. Well, you get a sense that for Carson Wentz and Frank Wright and the Colts, what an opportunity this is. The way their season started, 0-3. They went on the road, got a win against Miami. If they can pull out a win here, everybody had written off the NFC South, but this team has the pieces to compete in that division, and this would be a huge win on the road for them. Taylor has the first down, stays on his feet and has more, trying to run away from Stevens, and he does. 28 yards, Wentz to Taylor. Watch Jonathan Taylor here, out here in the flat. He was trying to hit Michael Pittman on the crosser, he checked it down to Jonathan Taylor, and just watch all the people that had a shot at Jonathan. You have four defenders out here within a couple yards of him. He cuts it back inside and then turns on the Jets. This game is about players and not plays a lot of times. There's an example. And no pass rush up front from the Baltimore defensive line. If you give Carson Wentz that much time to survey the field, he will get to his third read and hurt you. Wentz trying to duck away and can't get out of there. Taken down, it's Justin Houston who inches closer to that elusive hundredth sack. We'll check the flag. Came in a sack and a half shy of a hundred. Personal foul, first call and tackle. Defense number 50. A 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's just unfortunate for Justin Houston. Wentz tries to duck underneath him. He's trying to get him on the ground if by any means necessary. And he had his hand up around the nameplates. Take a look at this. Ah, there it is. Yep. Yeah, and that buckle, that's all it's yeah. required. Outside the box and the buckle foul. Correctly called. Justin Houston, a Colt for the last couple of seasons to let him walk. Came to Baltimore. He said the Steelers offered him more money. But he turned down Pittsburgh money to try and win a championship here. Here's Taylor on the pitch. Down to the 20. Cannot say enough about how this offensive line has continued to answer the bell when they need it the most. And they have played the physical game as well as anyone has played it against this Baltimore Ravens front. Because this team, you know, led by Don Martindale on defense, plays a physical brand of football. And this makeshift offensive line that is missing some two of its best offensive linemen 
and Nelson and Smith is answering the bell here on this drive. Colts looking to score on the fifth consecutive possession. Taylor stopped by Calais Campbell. Going to bring up a third down. Taylor has averaged over 100 yards rushing in each of the last 10 games. He's got 116 yards receiving tonight. What a game. And if it's me here, if I'm Frank Reich, I'm going to go right back to this offensive line and Jonathan Taylor in third and short. Got to have it situations. Ryan Kelly, the center, right in the middle, and Chris Reed, the left guard, both playing excellent tonight, moving the line of scrimmage. Two tight ends. Here we go. Big play, third and one. Got the timeout before the play clock expired, and that was close. And Wentz, a shake of his head. Yeah, he had a situation there. He didn't like the call that came in versus the defense he saw, and why is it take a timeout? Yeah. How unimportant does that rushing record we talked about all week long for the Ravens, right? It's kind of like that was a nice, cute record when we're winning, but now when you're trying to win the football game, that's... That's so in the rearview mirror. That's so secondary now. Yeah, when you're trying to come from behind, for sure. I mean, you know you're going to have to throw it. You know that your running game hasn't been able to get going all night long because the Colts' defense give them credit. They have really stepped up and answered and answered the call to duty. And right now, it's on the defense here in a crucial third down short situation. Out of the timeout. So they got to have it play. I'm still running it. That's a crowded line of scrimmage. That yeah, is. And they're running it too. And the leap up and over for the first down. Taylor's got it right over that offensive line. And look, there's really nowhere for him to go. And he just gets vertical. That's like leaping at the goal line for the one yard. And then his body serves for the first down. I kind of like it. He continues to work. You know, he's yeah, not down because he, he's, he's on top of everybody, and he might get an extra half yard there. That's good awareness by Jonathan on that play. The clock is stopped, guys. We'll check on the timeout situation. But the clock stopped immediately, and there it is, in fact, the timeout. can't tell you how impressed I've been up front. You know, we talked a little bit about Chris Strausser earlier in the game, the offensive line coach for, for the Colts. But without Quentin Nelson, without Braden Smith, Anthony Costanzo retired a year ago. They right. bring in Eric Fisher, and he's not 100% healthy. But they have gelled under Chris Strausser in a way that has been really impressive tonight. And they said, they told us in our meetings, we're coming. It's the cohesiveness of practice. A lot of that is getting Wentz healthy. Him practicing, but you can see the Colts coming. Got the win last week and really trying to get a signature win here tonight in Baltimore. It's Taylor on the ground for a loss. Pernell McPhee and another timeout. So you get off to a rough start like the Colts did at 0-3 and, and you wonder about the playoff situation again as an extra Extra game this season in the AFC, get an extra home game as well. And you see the Colts, this was heading into tonight's action. And Frank Reich's first season, the Colts were the third team in NFL history to make the playoffs. They started 1-5 and five and actually wow. went on to win a playoff game that year. So you don't want to go there. I think the point is, with the Texans and the Jaguars struggling, four games against those two opponents still to be played. A brutal first five games on the schedule for the Colts. That everything's in play. Yeah. We don't know how the Titans are going to finish out either. Yeah. They did lose that game at the Titans. They'll get them at home later in the year, but that, that was a long way from being done in the AFC South. Second and 11. Down to the 15. And on this drive, the Colts have taken over three and a half minutes off the clock. This was exactly the drive the Colts needed. Yeah. Hey, look, they're forcing this Raven defense to have to tackle. We heard Brandon Staley talk about the benefit of running the football, despite the fact that, you know, obviously you're trying to take the clock down here and really trying to punch this ball in. The physical aspect of this game is something that still holds tried and true. 
And they are really executing in a way that has to make the offensive coaches proud about how they've responded. Third and eight. Nothing doing there. Not even close. Calais Campbell comes up with maybe the biggest stop of the night for Baltimore. And the clock will wind towards five minutes. Yeah, the, the clock here was more important to Frank Wright than, than getting a touchdown or getting a first down there. He was always going to kick this ball. He just wanted to, to burn uh, as much time as he could, knowing that if they make this field goal, it's now a two-score game. Here's Blankenship, already two for two. This from 37 to make it a two-score game again. And it's blocked! Blocked by Calais Campbell! Consecutive giant plays for Campbell, keeping it a one-score game. First kick ever blocked off the foot off Rodrigo Blankenship. It's this classic technique by Calais. You're just going to see him. We'll just watch him get skinny, swim, and get that big pull up. Actually, get both of them up. He hits it with his left hand. Look, man, when you're a man who is 6'8", yeah. and you put, your, you put your arms up, how tall do you become? I mean, how high do you got to get that ball? So that's uh, 300 pounds getting skinny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds a little counterintuitive, but he did. All right. Here we go. Four and a half to play. Jackson floats one in the air and falls harmlessly away. It was deflected. Looked like Muhammad got the pressure on Jackson. Boy, you're very lucky for Lamar Jackson to get the, another shot at this. Muhammad came around the edge and affected that throw. When balls flutter out of the quarterback's hand in the middle of the field, they rarely hit the ground. Very fortunate. Lamar had hit his last 12. Jackson's only missed on five throws tonight. 25 of 30 for a 326. Impressive passing numbers by both quarterbacks this evening. Jackson, the completion of Marquise Brown. Gain of 17. There's no need to be in a rush if you're Lamar Jackson. You can go no huddle if you like keeping their personnel on the field, but just uh, execute the offense. Jackson surveys, gets it out for Devontae Freeman. First down. And all of a sudden, the Ravens are running downhill now. And that was a great example of Lamar going through his reads. He wanted to come to the right side of the field to Mark Andrews, wasn't there flipped sides of the field and got the ball to Freeman and made a nice move in the open field. What's going to be important for the Colts is the tackle and keep people in bounds and tackle. Get them on the ground. Bobbled by Freeman but he's able to hang on to it. He's marked down just inside the 40. We'll give mate. When you have these two-minute situations and you're going up tempo, the first three or four plays are so important because if you complete them, then the defensive line gets gassed and they won't be able to rush and that's what DeForest Buckner is experiencing right now Jackson in trouble able to get out of there and there's the speed Lamar Jackson east and west before he turns it up north three minutes to play five yard gain in the end for Jackson that's a play that looked like it was going to be a disaster to maybe be a big play so then a Kirk comes and makes a tackle in the open field against him, one of the most dangerous runners in this league. Colts finally got the change personnel there. Jackson is behind Andrews, and that'll stop the heart-thumping drama for a second. End the clock with 2.41 to go in regulation time, we should point out. Yeah, you mentioned that shift change for the Colts defensive line. That was critical because the four guys that were out there were huffing and puffing, and now you get 57 Teray in there, get Grover Muhammad back in the game, and at least get some pressure on Lamar Jackson. Colts rushing for Lamar steps and throws, finds Brown in a seam. 
And he's down at the 12. Gain of 20. This is a nice high-low type of combination against zone coverage. We're at a second level. Defenders, they start, they start to follow James Prochet on the inside. Nice call. Jackson swings it sidearm to Williams. Tyson Williams inside the five, gain of nine. And that's how we get to the two-minute warning. Colts have never been so happy to see a two-minute warning. Here we go. All right, Scott, we will see you shortly. Biggest comeback in Lamar Jackson's career. Down 11 points. Week two this season against the Chiefs. Won 36-35. Wasn't that long ago. Lamar and the Ravens were down to these Colts here tonight. 25-9. To so we come out of the two-minute warning. And the Ravens have the ball. Nestled just inside the five. Last time they were down here, they threw the touchdown to Mark Andrews in the middle of the field, and then they came back on the two-point conversion in the flat. Remember, they got to score and get the two-point conversion here. At some point, Mark Andrews is going to be a focal point. And if you're Matt Eberflus, you cannot just play zone coverage down here. You have to put someone on Mark Andrews, and you have to make sure you take care of Marquise Brown. Someone else has to beat you. It can't be those two. Still get a first down before the end zone. Jackson, plenty of green in front of him, and the football comes out again. The football comes out again. They're going to say he was down. Another close call for Lamar Jackson inside the one-yard line. Down, first down. And if they have, if he is down, it's a first down. Watch the right hand of Darius Leonard. He comes in, he's looking to punch. Look at that fist. He's looking to punch that ball out. Lamar, very fortunate that that knee was down, but that's Leonard in a nutshell. And the clock has been running the whole time. Confusion there. Lamar eats it and Muhammad tackles him. Looked like there's some confusion with Freeman. And it goes to loss. Looks like Lamar is trying to pull the ball. Yeah. Freeman wants it. And he wanted to take it. And they're all the way back to the five. And this completely changes your play calls. So you're going to throw the football here in all likelihood. And you notice Matt Eberflus was playing some man-to-man -man out here. Jackson with all sorts of time. Now throws. Caught. Andrews. Touchdown, Ravens, and a two-point conversion away from the tie. What a heck of a route by Mark Andrews. Watch him. Watch him go out, come in here, and then loop back around. And if you are trying to pass this off and then match this up late, Okaruke, he cannot get it. He can't match the pattern quick enough. And Mark Andrews is going to score another touchdown. But you got to have this next play, this two-point conversion. You got to have it. Andrews is lined up in the slot for the tie. It's Andrews, and he got it. We're all even at 25s. Ravens have come all the way back. They got exactly what they wanted. They had Mark Andrews matched up on the linebacker, Okuroke. And as soon as Lamar saw that, he's going to act like he's going to run and then just flip it to him. What an answer. What a ball game. Not over yet. If you're Okuroke, you're going to want that play back because you know you have to protect inside out. Mark Andrews just too good, though. Nice move. And how about Calais Campbell? Eighth career blocked field goal. No other player has more than five since 2008. It's the blocked field goal that sets up that touchdown drive. And keep in mind, the Colts definitely have some kicking issues. Missed extra point is the difference in the game right now.
come out to the 25. And tonight, Burger King, king of the moment. In a first half that didn't have much, second half has been bananas. Uh, shades of Cleveland from a year ago where Superman comes out and just starts to go off in the second half. And he's had his fair share of misses tonight, putting the ball on the ground, but he has not let it get to him. He's been resilient and, you know, coming back to the Colts and what they did defensively on back-to-back -back drives inside the five-yard line. They let Mark Andrews catch two touchdowns and two extra points. That's amazing that they let that happen. 39 seconds left in regulation. Wentz. Has it for Paris Campbell. What an incredible route by Paris Campbell. Faked like he was going to the, the clock. Faked like he was going to the post, broke it back outside. What a coming out game for him. They need, to, they need more of those if they're going to get down here in the field goal range. Oh, does Carson Wentz have a little bit of Rodgers magic in him? All you got to do is get to the you know, 35, 30-yard 30 line, maybe with Blankenship feeling a little bit uh, dinged up in this game, but they're in great position. Colts still have two timeouts. This crowd roars. Final half-minute regulation. Wentz now in all sorts of trouble. Flings it forward. And it'll go as an incomplete pass. Try to get it to Hines. And Jimmy Smith able to knock it away. I think it's the first time I mentioned Smith's name tonight. With yeah. 24 seconds left. Yeah, you see Carson Wentz trying to prevent the sack. Brandon Stevens bearing down on him. He was trying to go out here to Paris Campbell again. They are trying to attack the right side of the Baltimore Ravens secondary. Where Anthony Averett has been lining up. And there you see Rodrigo Blankenship. Lisa reported earlier, definitely having an issues. Did not tell us exactly what it was. Here's Wentz. Rolling to the right, throwing down the sideline. And wanted Paris Campbell. Marlon Humphrey was there. And there's a flag back at the 41 with 18 seconds left. Yeah, that's that's a hold on the Colts and you know, Carson Wentz. You got to know that blitz is coming. Holding offense number 69, 10 yard penalty, second down. When you know the blitz is coming from Baltimore defensively, it's very hard to extend that play. And as he rolls out, you put your offensive line in a difficult position. Blitz is coming from the left. He can throw that ball underneath right there to. I think that's. Pittman just get five, six yards and go on to the next play. Still need about 25 yards, we think. Two timeouts left for the Colts. To Pascal for a couple. He was tripped up by Tavon Young, and a flag comes in. Doyle got knocked over. Man, it looks like that's going to be a personal foul. Critical mistake by Tavon Young. Critical, critical mistake. And Young's been terrific all night. You just let the Colts off the hook. Doyle is pushing his head down, and they always get the second guy. Yep. Doyle's at, Doyle's at fault, but Tavon Young, and got to resist the urge. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 25, a 15-yard penalty, with an automatic first down. Highly emotional game. Crowds amped up. You got them backed up. And that's a cheap shot there yeah. by Jack Doyle, no question about yeah. it. That's super cheap, but you cannot retaliate, especially given what's on the line right now. But you're right, man. Look, second guy gets caught. So now the ball is at the 45-yard line, and you got 13 seconds. They have two timeouts. So they, all of the field is open for Carson Wentz to try to get more yardage to put Blankenship in position to take a shot. We understand Blankenship has a hip problem, but he has kicked field goal tonight. Has a couple of them to his credit. 13 seconds left on the clock. 
Ravens gave the Colts a free 15. Here's Wentz. Across the middle, it's caught. Zach Haskell. Inside the 30, pick up a 15 and a timeout. Six seconds left on the clock. Big time throw from Carson Wentz. There he is. Look at him stand in the pocket. That ball's got to be delivered on time. We talk about Carson Wentz coming into this game after what he went through in Philadelphia, a broken player, both physically and mentally, and had to be rebuilt from the ground up with Frank Reich. He's come into a hostile environment and had an unbelievable performance, over 400 yards against one of the top defenses in the National Football League and put them in position here to take a shot to win the game. Look, and we've talked about Carson. We've talked about the offensive line. Let's talk about this receiving core. Because without T.Y. Hilton, this is a receiving core that not many people thought could get the job done in a big spot against a real aggressive man coverage defense like the Ravens are. And they have all answered the bell. Paris Campbell coming out party. Michael Pittman, big 50-50 catches down the field. Zach Pascal right there, who did he get open against? Marlon Humphrey, one of the best press corners in the NFL. So everyone on this offense has stepped up tonight in a big spot. Now we'll see if they can complete it here in regulation. Colts have 512 total yards of offense. Carson Wentz has 402 yards passing. No interceptions tonight. So they're going to try to get a couple more yards, and I agree with them uh, because of what's going on with Blankenship. But you're telling Carson Wentz, listen, if it's not there, you got to throw this ball away. It's a 48-yard field goal from here. They want some more. Wentz will dive forward for two more. Spend the last time out. Now, the last time the Colts tried a field goal with Rodrigo Blankenship, 93 got in the way of the former Calais Campbell. And that led to a touchdown drive by the Ravens. Another two-point conversion to tie things up. And that's how we got to 25-25. So it was Mark Lewinsky uh, who was lined up over Calais Campbell the last time they tried that field goal. And so the pressure's on him now. I would imagine they'll put Calais Campbell in a similar spot. And again, at the end of the first half, we had all sorts of chaos. Sanchez, the punter, and Holder runs out to kick the field goal attempt. Now it's Blankenship. There's Campbell over Lewinsky again. From 47, Rhodes will snap it. Sanchez is the holder. For the win, Blankenship missed it. No good. You just see it here, the snap, the hold. Calais Campbell is pressuring once again. He's saying, hey, this ball comes over here. I'm going to block it again. High drama in Baltimore. We go into overtime. Blankenship came into the game hitting 31 consecutive field goals from 45 and closer. That from 47 off the mark. Has an earlier missed extra point, earlier blocked field goal. And in a nightmare of a weekend for kickers around the league, we're going to overtime. An important going into overtime on the other sideline you got one of the greatest kickers Remember of all welcome. time in just a modified seven death overtime each team will get an opportunity to possess the ball unless the first team scores a touchdown they keep the ball for the entire period or there's a safety timing will be like the fourth period each team will get two timeouts all the reviews will come from the booth if we're still tied at the end of 10 it'll be recorded as such same coin, heads, tails, heads and tails, captain your call. Heads. The call is heads. And it is tails. Welcome all is one across the receive. And they'll receive at this end. We've had overtime every week in the first five weeks of the NFL. Just the second time ever that's happened. OT on Monday night tonight. 
Ravens will get the football. Duvernay from the five. Out to the 35. See where they spot him. But pretty good starting field position for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. And if you think the that coin toss didn't matter, look at the Baltimore last three drives. All over 70 yards. All touchdowns. They have all the momentum coming into this overtime. And it's worth mentioning that the, ball, the, the Colts are still light in the secondary. And Anthony Chesley, the first-year player out of Coastal Carolina who's been targeted consistently in the fourth quarter, is out on the field. Touchdown wins the game right here for the Ravens. Start from the 32. Colts only rushing three. Jackson surveys, and now he'll take off and get pushed out of bounds by DeForest Buckner. The Colts have never lost a game in which they have led by 16 or more in the fourth quarter. Never. Since moving to Indianapolis in 1984, the Colts are 120 and 0 when leading by 16 or more. Their last loss up 16 in the fourth, the team's last loss here in Baltimore. December of 1983 and they led 25-9 not that long ago Jackson across the middle Andrews has been the hero in the second half 11th catch for Mark Andrews having a career night along with Lamar. You see Matt Eberflus trying to dial up some zone blitzes. You see Muhammad dropping back from his defensive end position, but they're not getting their pattern matches fast enough, and Lamar is just picking them apart. Jackson again has all time to find Prochet for four. Sandejo brought the lumber for the Colts. You know, the offenses have such an advantage here late in the game and overtime because the defensive line and the pass rush are just gassed. There's no pressure on Lamar. He is now 33 of 39 throwing the football for close to 400 yards. They're going to shut it down. John Parry, tell me about this. You know, it's a legal hit. The receiver becomes a runner. The defender tries to get the head out and the shoulder in. Unfortunate injury. Zendejo on Prochet. Yeah, I think they, so, they 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 sent down that Zendejo, they were worried about him and that he needed to be taken off the field. We saw Zendejo last year when he was with the Cleveland Browns. Put a big hit late in that football game. This guy who plays the game very hard, very physical. And now George Odom. So they, they got backups at corner on both sides, and they got a backup at safety. Colts rushing four. Lamar gets rid of it, finds Marquise Brown. Couple of moves. And they're going to mark him out at about the 38 gain of 11. Play a lot of zone, you play a lot of off coverage, you leave a lot of space, put a lot of stress on your secondary as far as making tackles after the catch when you're just tired. You know, I think very tough. I think Matt Eberflus needs to think about coming with some pressure, some all-out pressure. And because you're not guard, you're not guarding anybody on the outside. Maybe you can bring some pressure and force a turnover from Lamar or get him caught in the backfield. They're just sitting back. Pressure coming. Underneath the Josh Oliver trying to spin out of a tackle. Okurake made the stop. Eight minutes left in the OT. Pickup of eight. Your depth is taxed like theirs is right now. I mean, you're really trying to just go ahead and play the bend but don't break type of philosophy. Hopefully force them to kick a field goal and give your offense a chance. Second and three. Jackson has the first down. To the 20, Leonard the stop. If you think about taking a timeout on defense for the Colts, get a breather for some of these guys. Yeah, they are breathing heavy out here. And Lamar is just dialed in. 
I tell you, every time Lamar has the ball, though, if I'm Leonard or these linebackers, I'm punching oh, at that ball. Absolutely. That's, a, that, that's the only chance they really have at stopping them at this point is a turnover and getting that ball out. Murray from Jackson. Gain of eight for the 13. You see the Ravens offensive linemen with their hands on their hips, too. This game has been taxing for everyone. Highly emotional. Come back from a deficit. We're going to have to dig deep here in these last couple of minutes. On the ground, Murray has the first down. First and goal from the seven. And that rushing record has probably never felt more meaningless at this point. They're going to bring an extra offensive lineman in. Tristan Colon Castillo. They've got the big man Ricard in. And I think the Colts are going to take a timeout. What a game. First and goal. At the Indianapolis seven yard line. Both sides need a breather. At the top of this broadcast, we talked about Lamar Jackson and his growth and what he has worked on in the offseason, what he needed to do better than, than he did in the divisional round against the Bills where they scored three points a year ago, and that was throwing the ball from the pocket. It has not been perfect for him tonight, but. When you come out and you throw the ball 42 times and you complete 36 of them for over 430 yards and three touchdowns, I mean, it's this offense has evolved. And if, if they got to throw it, they will throw it. And he's proven he can do it. He has put the ball on the ground a couple times tonight inside the five. And here we go. I'm not running any zone reads. I'm not giving any chance for the ball to be on the ground. I'm turning around and handing it off to Murray. And they do. He'll be dropped before Darius Leonard got there first. Who else? Second and goal. When you're tired like this as a defender, and you're down here in the red area, and you're down here almost inside the five-yard line, Everything happens so fast, and when you're so tired, you just don't make as good of decisions, as quick of decisions. And you know they're going to put the ball in the air here at some point and try and score and win this game. Well, as much me, zone coverage as they play, are they going to line up and play man to man? Or are they going to be able to make the plays that they need to make? Second and goal, second in the game. There it is, caught. Touchdown. Marquise Brown and this game is over it belongs to the Baltimore Ravens a furious comeback now they will take a look and now the officials are heading off they've seen enough apparently Talk about whether or not they're going to line up and play man-to-man -man coverage. You just see what Marquise Brown does. He just works away from Darius Leonard on this touchdown catch. And Darius has his eyes back to the quarterback. There it is. You see from this angle, it looks like he wanted to come inside of Leonard. Leonard played inside. Great job by Marquise Brown of popping back out on the same page with Lamar Jackson. And the growth of Marquise Brown two weeks ago, the three drops in the game, and everybody's questioning whether he's going to be the number one guy to come through in the clutch, not with his speed, but with his head to make the right read in a zone-dropping linebacker for the win. What a way for Baltimore to put it.